Hi kids, it's Mrs. Vrabel. How are you? I hope you're fine. I'm fine too, thanks. Uh, hey, today we're going to continue on talking about uh, investigating the causes of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, the first part about why don't people with DMD make the protein dystrophin. Uh, last time we got to get, last time we talked, last time we were in class, the last thing we talked about was how dystrophin works. Uh, what, what is dystrophin? So remember, dystrophin is a protein that acts as like a, a rope or a boat anchor that um, attaches the outermost layer of actin inside of a muscle cell to that muscle cell's membrane. Um, so again, muscle cells are arranged in bundles inside of the muscle fascicles. The outermost uh, kind of layer of actin is attached to the membrane so that when they contract, when the muscle contracts, the cell membrane and the cell's interior contract smoothly with the rest of the muscle cells, okay? Um, in DMD, people with DMD don't make dystrophin correctly, or they don't make it at all. And uh, when they don't have that anchor, uh, either it's shortened or not there, when the muscle contracts, the cell membrane tears, okay? Uh, that tearing of the membrane causes a couple of different cascading problems where calcium rushes in and activates protease, which destroys the healthy muscle proteins inside the cell and the cell dies. So that's where they end up with scar tissue in their muscles. Um, and creatine kinase rushes out through those same tears at the same time, uh, leaving the muscles with no energy to further repair or contract. Okay, so that was a review from the other day. So let's talk a little bit about proteins like why why don't they make that protein properly? So what is a protein? So we talked about proteins in macromolecules. And remember, proteins make up most of your body's actual structures, uh, including tissues, hormones, enzymes, all kinds of things. Your body's mostly made of protein. Um, they provide structure and function all the way down to the cellular level. And actually the main job of most of your cells is to make a protein of one or more sort, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. And the monomer for proteins, remember, is amino acids. And this is where it starts to get important as it relates to DMD. Okay. okay, so proteins have uh, very specific shapes. Each protein, and there are millions of proteins, each one has a very specific shape. And that shape, the form of the protein, determines its function. It cannot do its job. It cannot perform its function in a cell or in a body if it is not the right shape. So what determines that shape? It is the amino acid sequence in a protein. That's what determines the shape of the protein. And every protein has a different amino acid sequence. So there are 20 different amino acids. That was back on the previous slide. T those 20 amino acids just being put together in an almost statistically unlimited um order and recombination is how we get those different protein structures. So first of all, the proteins are built of a string of amino acids, a very specific sequence of different amino acids, and they are put together like a string of beads. So each one is bonded together with a peptide bond, and this is what they look like when they're first put together, this little string, phenylalanine, leucine, serine, cysteine. Okay, and then the second thing that happens is those that string then starts to fold in on itself as those amino acids start to bond with each other across the chain. So like if you take a string of beads and you fold it in half, two beads might touch. So that happens in an amino acid chain as well. And that's where we start to get that first protein structure. And then it folds again, and then it folds one more time. And we end up getting this kind of globular, individually perfect shape for every protein. And again, the folding is determined by the sequence of amino acids and how they're going to bond together across that string. So if they're not in the right sequence, 
if the amino acids aren't in the right sequence or they don't bond properly, they're not going to fold properly. The protein won't do its job. Can I say that any more times? <laughs> do you get it? Okay, you get it. You're smart. You got it. Okay. Uh, again, the final structure has to be exact for that protein to work. It's like a lock and a key, especially when it comes to things like enzymes. Um, we mentioned protease um, and creatine kinase. Those are both proteins that do a specific um, enzymatic function. They have to fit right with what they're working with. All proteins do, okay, including dystrophin. All right. So how do we make sure that the, the, they're getting in the right order? How, how does that happen? So first of all, remember what organelle makes proteins? Go ahead and say it. So we did all unit on cell organelles. You had to build a cell. That was your test. What, is, what organelle makes proteins? Yes, you're right. Ribosomes. Good job. So what does that mean? So protein synthesis is the fancy word for what a ribosome does. It makes protein synthesize means to put together so ribosomes first of all they read a molecule of mrna we haven't talked a lot about nucleic acids so far here we go so rna is similar to dna in that it is a nucleic acid it is made of the same monomers which are nucleotides uh, but rna and dna have some differences so dna is always in the nucleus of every eukaryotic cell mrna that m stands for messenger so it is the thing that takes dna's code out of the nucleus Okay. only out nothing gets back in and okay. keeps the DNA safe so the mRNA is read by a ribosome and the code on that mRNA tells the ribosome to gather and bind amino acids together with the help of another RNA molecule called tRNA okay. um, this is a video about that and I will link it underneath here Pretty easy, right? Super easy, two steps. No, it's a lot more complicated than that, but here's how it does it. So each amino acid in that 20 amino acid uh, group is, is coded for in an mRNA molecule by a three nucleotide code. So the letters that make up this RNA strand, each of those little sticks with a letter on it, that is a nucleotide. And I'll talk more about those in a sec. Every three nucleotides makes a codon. And each codon calls for a different amino acid-ish. Each amino acid is called for by three different codons. Okay. So the ribosome reads these letters and every three letters it goes oh those three letters tell me to go get this amino acid great and the next three letters tell me to go get this amino acid so they read every three letters tell a trna go bring me this one and they link them together in that chain of beads okay so glutamine proline serine um isoleucine arginine histine histidine Threonine. Look how I think I know them. Maybe. Okay. So let's talk a little more about that mRNA, messenger RNA. Again, its job is to keep the DNA safe in the nucleus by traveling between the DNA and the ribosome one way, only out. And it uh, translates the code from DNA. So its codons are made from the letters A, C, G, and U. Those are the nucleotides. So that's adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. And these are, again, those are nucleotides. Those are the monomers for all nucleic acids, which are RNAs and DNAs. And um, these make up those codons. They tell the ribosome which amino acids to put in which place to build a protein that functions and folds properly okay okay so again each codon is it's like a word if you're reading a book or reading what i've written on here words are made of letters right 
Codons are like words made of nucleotide letters. And then, so that's a language. That's like RNA language. And then the ribosome is the thing that translates the words from the language of RNA into the language of proteins. And the language of proteins is amino acids. So amino acids are the words in protein language. So that's the ribosome's whole job. It does translation and building. And of course, scientists are smarty pants and they have figured out how to translate that language too. And we have uh, these code charts. You should have this um, on, it should be linked on the assignment on Canvas. So you should have two different kinds of code charts where you can uh, read the codon on an mRNA. You find the letters and then it tells you which um which amino acid is coded for by that codon. So as we're reading it, if a codon's first letter is U, we come to this box. If its second letter is A, so I'm still in U, I'm gonna go straight across in the U to the A box. And then the third letter, let's say the third letter is also A, so I'm going to come to this third box over here, so I'm still in the U, column or i'm sorry the u row and i'm going to come over to this a and come back to that second letter a and where those three u a a intersect that's the codon code and u a a is actually what we call a stop codon it doesn't code for an amino acid it tells the ribosome you're done let her go and it's finished building that protein. Um, other codons, let's see, if we had a codon that was C, C, oh sorry, clicky finger. Let's say I had C, 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 I would go to first base C, second base C, so within this box I need to find the third C, it's over here, so back, that's proline, right? Okay, easy. Right. There is another code chart that's um, on the handout, which is a circular one. That one you just start first base is on the inside and you go out every level. It's a little easier. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, great. All right. So you should write this in your notes or type this on the note guide that's the Google Slides note guide that I, that I gave you. Uh, again, every three letters on an mRNA is called a codon. Every codon codes for an amino acid. The ribosome attaches to an mRNA molecule that has come from the nucleus out to the uh, rough ER. This mostly happens on the rough ER in the ribosome. The start codon is actually AUG, and the, the ribosome has to find that AUG code on the mRNA, and then it starts building the, uh, the protein from um, the codons on the mRNA. Okay, so uh, tRNA brings the complementary amino acids to the ribosome, and get, they get chained in order. Yeah, as soon as we hit a stop codon, which is A hold on, UAG, UAA, UA, there's one more, you are gone, anyway, um, so when it gets to a stop codon, that's when it knows the protein chain is done, the amino acid chain is done, let it go, and it begins that magical folding process, okay, okay, so make sure you write this down, make sure you know this, okay, um, there's, there's some analogies, so you can think about, um, you can think about, the protein synthesis as being um, like a recipe for a cake. So if I want to bake a cake, I have to get the recipe, right? Butter, flour, sugar, I have to cream those three together. There's my first instructions. And then I get salt, baking powder, eggs, and milk, uh, add that to those and mix it and then pour it into a pan and then bake it for this long at this temperature, right? So the cake is analogous to the finished protein structure. Every ingredient in that recipe is analogous to a codon in the M on mRNA, okay? So I want you to create your own analogy. Of course, if you're working from home, you can't work with a partner, but um, please create your own analogy on that Google slide that matches this, write your own in there, okay? Make sure you tell me what is analogous to your codon, and uh, what is analogous to the final protein. This is an easy analogy. 
you can think of something. Okay, so here's a question to preview next time. What happens if I were to leave out an ingredient or what if I didn't follow all of the instructions? What would happen to my cake? Something to think about for next time. Okay, okay, I think that's it. Um, oh no, that's not it. So let, <laughs> forgot I was gonna do this today. So how do we get the mRNA code? Where does that sequence come from? Okay, that comes from the DNA. Uh, genes are segments of DNA that serve as a template for mRNA formation. That's it. Everybody talks about how important genes are and that's the, it's the blueprint of life, which it is. But more importantly is that it, it doesn't really do, do a thing other than make an mRNA molecule in a certain code. So that process is called transcription. It makes each gene creates an mRNA, mRNA molecule, and then that molecule again is sent out to the ribosome to actually build the body and cellular structures. And so this happens in the nucleus, a segment of DNA that has the gene that needs to be transcribed. It unzips, and we'll go over this more when we talk more about DNA. And an mRNA molecule is assembled from that code. So DNA is also made of nucleotides, but there's uh, one difference between DNA and RNA. Um, DNA is made from the nucle nucleotides, <laughs> Homer Simpson's nucleotides. Pluritide. A, C, T, G are the nucleotides for DNA. RNA was A, C, U, G. So they pair up together in what we call base pairs. So any A that appears on the gene in the DNA sequence, when we're building an mRNA molecule, that's going to match up with a U. Okay. If it's a T, it's going to create an A on the mRNA, C with G, G to C, okay? So again, it builds the molecules from the complementary or opposite match base pair from DNA to RNA, okay? And this is what that looks like. So DNA is a double-stranded, twisty molecule. And if this is the gene, the center part is the gene that needs to be made into an mRNA, that's where the DNA gets unzipped. This all happens by enzymes because enzymes are magic. They're science magic. The, the enzymes then start reading the DNA's nucleotide sequence. So in this case, it starts here. It's uh, the DNA strand is red T, oh, geez, sorry, again, T, C, G, A, C, okay? So as it's building the mRNA molecule, it's going to find the matching complementary base and stick that together to make the mRNA. So A, G, C, U, G, okay? So again, if it's a T on DNA, it'll be an A in RNA. A C in DNA will be a G in RNA. G in DNA will be a C in RNA. A in DNA will be a U in RNA. Got it? Sure you do. No problem. Okay. There's another video. This is the whole video, and it's really good. Please watch it. Make sure that you write down five things that you saw on it. Oh, not going to play it now, though. I don't have oh, I think that... There we go. <laughs> High technology is great. Okay, so again, I want you to summarize protein synthesis on your sheet. You should write all of this. A gene on DNA is transcribed to build an mRNA molecule, A to U, C to G, T to A, and of course G to C is implied. mRNA leaves the nucleus and attaches to a ribosome in the cytoplasm. That ribosome then reads the mRNA codons and assembles the corresponding amino acids and binds them together. Once it's done, the protein is released and it folds and it's ready to do its job. Easy peasy. This is only the central dogma of biology. It's one of the most important concepts of life. Simple. 
all done. So your assignment is on Canvas. Uh, it is just a worksheet where you are going to practice translating and transcribing some, some DNA to RNA. Um, Oh, wow, that's big. So I, I, if you need help, if you don't understand it, please let me know via email and um, I will help you out. Okay, have a great day. Be safe, be careful, be smart, and be kind, especially right now, right?